In the previous simple harmonic motion video, you have studied and understood the definition of simple harmonic motion. So basically currently right now, we have a system that moves this way. You can see the pendulum is swinging left and right, and it has a particular relationship. And if you remember that relationship, that is where we're going to start our discussion for this video today, where we will look at the relationship between simple harmonic motion and position of the object. So if you're ready, let's go. But before we do so, I just want to remind you that simple harmonic motion is using back all the things that you have learned in your A2 chapters about how to study a system that is in motion. So think about your kinematics, your dynamics, your Newton's law of motion, your work energy power. So I'll map it out for you here, okay? So you have done this in your AS before. You will have a system, any system, maybe an inclined plane, okay? And then maybe a block is sliding down the inclined plane with the speed v. So sometimes we ask ourselves, why is the block sliding down the inclined plane? So here we will use your Newton's law of motion, your three Newton's laws. Okay. And basically we will hinge on F is equal to MA. Or net force, I'm going to write a sigma here to represent net force is equal to ma. So then we can say, oh, it's accelerating in this direction. We may have to resolve some forces. So we have been able to use the tools that we have, like for example, uh, force, res force resolving resolution to find your net force, etc., etc., to prove to us certain properties of the motion. That is the why. Okay. And the what here is kinematics. We need to be able to describe. So this kind of what is descriptive. Okay, when you don't when you think about why, it is to explain why uh, why the block slide down. So when it comes to descriptive, the first kind of descriptive pattern that we can think about is kinematics. Right? We will use terms like, so if you're thinking along the lines of displacement, yes. So for, for us right now, maybe I will call displacement X, okay? Displacement of the box, maybe the box traveled to this position. So you say, oh, here to here is X. Sure. Of course, the second one will be velocity. And the third one will be acceleration. So all this, you're already familiar and you know the relationship, right? Okay, then the second one that we're going to look at when it comes to descriptive is in terms of conservation of energy or basically what are the energy changes because whenever you want to describe something, the motion of an object, you can go down the kinematics route where you say, oh, it has traveled this far and it has gained that much velocity or it lost that much velocity. That's possible. Okay, but we could also talk about energy. We could say that there is a gain in kinetic energy or there is a gain in potential energy. Of course, this potential can be a few types, like in the inclined plane, it's gravitational potential. And this both are what we call mechanical energy. Okay, so if you are familiar with this uh, in maths, you will notice that normally when you are given a system, okay, these are the skills that you should have. You should be able to explain why, or use resultant force to explain why this thing is happening and what on earth is happening. So since you already know all this, oh, here's what we're doing. I'm going to replace this system. Oh, you have this system of inclined plane that you are kind of hopefully familiar with because you, are, you have studied your AS. I'm going to replace the system with any system that is in simple harmonic motion. So a system in simple harmonic motion that we have covered so far are uh, including our pendulum. So if I showed you just now in the slight introduction, you have a pendulum swinging left and right. Okay, you may have a spring oscillating up and down, and you may have other, other examples. But how do we know something is in simple harmonic motion, SHM? So we are going to focus on SHM system because we have done the force resolution and if it's simple harmonic motion, we know that the acceleration of the particle is proportional to negative x. So once you can cash in, or once you know this about your motion, don't care la whether it's a pendulum or whether it's a block, 
as long as it's proportional to negative x, this thing is in simple harmonic motion. And it's a bit like a pass or an unlock. Anything that is in simple harmonic motion will have the same descriptive properties when it comes to kinematics and energy. Okay, you know why? Because you see on one side you have the acceleration. So if the acceleration has the same behavior with respect to displacement, so this one will be the same. So any kind of uh, motion that obeys simple harmonic motion, will, you can use the same equations or the same relationship. And you may be asking me, what are the relationships and what are the equations? Well, this is what the video is about. So before we deep dive into how to change our description specifically for simple harmonic motion that obey A is proportional to negative X, I am going to roughly uh, outline what we'll, do to, what we'll do in this video. Okay, so when it comes to kinematics description, all of your equations will have two variables. So of course you could say, well, I could let the variable be dependent on uh, time. Okay, so there are two options. Maybe this one you will have, where is the particle at a given time? What is the speed at a given time? What is the acceleration at a given time? what is the kinetic energy at a given time and what is the potential energy at a given time okay so you can see here all of these things are time dependent variable so we want to be able to uh, tell or calculate or predict the properties when time is given so everything here I'll say time dependent but of course, you know that, let's say, we stare at a pendulum. So let's say I pull up a oscillating pendulum here. And uh, if you think about this oscillating pendulum, the time matters, but the position matters as well, right? Maybe I want to find the speed of the pendulum here. Maybe I want to find the speed of the pendulum here. So another possible variable instead of time, is to think about position dependent, okay? Position dependent. So this position dependent, of course, you can't find x in terms of x, so here you will have v in terms of displacement, a in terms of displacement. So basically, what is the speed two centimeters away from the equilibrium point? So let's say the center point here is equilibrium. Why is the speed 2 cm away from the equilibrium point? What is the acceleration 2 cm away from the equilibrium point, etc., etc. So you will have kinetic energy as a function of x, or basically in terms of x, and potential energy in terms of x. So this is in terms of Okay, so the purpose of uh, this part of your study in oscillation is you are now given a system. This system can be anything. So the first thing you need to ask yourself, is it in simple harmonic motion? And if it's in simple harmonic motion, how do we know? We were in CIE, they will give you an equation or they will give you a graph. So you would hopefully already watch those videos in part one. So it's either given by equation or... Uh, a against x graph. So once you can unlock that this thing is in simple harmonic motion, then whatever equation that appears here, whether it's time dependent, which means it's in terms of t, it's in terms of t, or whether it's position dependent, means it will be in terms of x displacement, ma, position dependent, all the equations we can use. Okay, so this, this is an introductory video. Now you can go and watch the videos where I talk about the time dependent relationship and the position dependent relationship while showing you how it demonstrates any kind of oscillating object in simple harmonic motion. I'll see you in those videos. Bye bye.